Good afternoon, uh, Ministers, Secretaries General, ladies and gents. You're very welcome here for the, to the Department of Justice for the launch of Zero Tolerance, our third national strategy on domestic sexual and gender based violence. Uh, brief housekeeping to begin with the emergency exits are accessed through the door that you came in and the two corridors uh, to either side of me behind me. Just very briefly, be, be, before I invite the, the Tishka ministers to launch the strategy, I just wanted to note that this department is, is particularly proud, I suppose, of colleagues in our criminal justice policy and governance and indeed transparency teams that have worked so hard on this over the last couple of years. Under the last strategy, as, as you're all aware, we ran a number of public awareness campaigns, including the What Would You Do, No Excuses and Still Here campaigns. And as you'll see today, this strategy commits us to doing a lot more of that work. Uh, to mark the launch of the strategy, the first of those campaigns goes live today. And the Zero Tolerance campaign is seeking to reach the widest possible audience to really out allow everyone to understand what we mean by Zero Tolerance. To get us started today, we wanted to share with you the video that will be launched in about 25 minutes, I think. We hope that you'll like it and also that you'll share it widely and regularly over the coming months. So I think we can tee that up. It's time for zero tolerance. For domestic abuse. For sexual harassment. For gender-based violence. Zero tolerance of unwanted texting, unwanted touching. Zero laughing off the inappropriate. Zero tolerance of victim shaming, of being bought or sold. Zero sexual harassment, sexual violence, rape. It's time for zero excuses. Zero being afraid of a partner, hiding the bruises. Zero not being believed, asking why didn't you say no. Feeling there's no safe place. It's time for zero tolerance. Zero turning a blind eye to mental, physical and emotional abuse. In our streets, in our homes, in our beds. Domestic, sexual and gender-based violence has zero place in our society. Pleasure to introduce the Taoiseach Michal Martin, the Minister for Justice, Helen McEntee, and the Minister for Children, Equality, Disability, Integration and Youth, Roderick Gorman, to launch the strategy. Um, proceed. First of all, I'd like to welcome uh, you all this afternoon to the Department of Justice uh, for the launch of Zero Tolerance, Ireland's uh, third domestic, sexual and gender-based uh, violence strategy. I and all of my colleagues in government are fully committed to this goal of zero tolerance in society for all forms of domestic, sexual and gender-based violence. We are also committed to ensuring that we provide all of the supports required to meet the needs of victims and survivors of these most horrific of crimes. We know this is no simple task, but the most important work never is. We also know we cannot do this alone. We need you, those working at the front line, to input into and guide this work as we seek to implement it. We need to listen to the voices and experiences of victims. We need the whole of society to recognize the role it must play in changing attitudes and behavior. The work that has gone into this strategy has been extensive and it has involved wide consultation over the past two years with all of you here today. It marks a new way forward in how we can and will work collectively to reach our shared goal. Co-designed and co-owned, the strategy, strategy recognizes that combating this violence requires us to put in place the right structures and processes. It requires focused coordination, and it requires delivery, now and in the longer term. The strategy we are launching today is comprehensive, 
based on the four instrument pil inst Istanbul pillars of prevention, uh, protection, prosecution and coordination. It also includes commitments to deliver a new statutory DSGBV uh, agency, doubling the number of refuge spaces, extensive public awareness campaigns, new legislation to increase the penalties for assault and recognize offenses such as stalking, extensive oversight structures, including uh, a role uh, for my department with the Minister for Justice Department in terms of a delivery board uh, that will be jointly chaired uh, that will uh, see through the implementation of this strategy. It is true uh, that each and every victim of domestic and sexual violence is unique. Their circumstances are unique. Their experience is unique, and the impact on them and on their life is unique. And because of this, their needs are unique, and we must be able to respond in a way that works for each victim. The strategy recognizes this. Its guiding mission is clear, zero tolerance of domestic, sexual, and gender-based violence. It places the individual victims and their needs at the center. It will take us from a fragmented approach to a holistic and tailored one. It will build supports and processes that proactively respond to and adapt to meet the needs of each individual. At the outset, I mentioned the focus throughout the strategy on putting in place the right structures and processes. To do this, the strategy and implementation plan places significant weight on continuing to work collaboratively with those working at the front line of DSGBV services and being guided by our expertise. Listening carefully to you convinced the government to set up a new statutory agency to be responsible uh, to, for DSGBV services. It will ensure a sustained and unrelenting, fo unrelenting focus on raising, raising awareness and helping victims. We see and understand the urgency of it and have set ourselves a target that it will be active by the 1st of January 2024. Having a dedicated agency will help ensure that the strategy will not falter and that victims of the SGBV will receive the priority they require and deserve. The work of the agency will not just be about better services, but also will involve encouraging a conversation in wider society about the root causes of the SGBV. We all have to become more aware of the roots of outmoded attitudes and challenge them more. We all have to be clear with each other that there is simply no place in society for misogyny. Another major decision that we have taken is to double the number of refuge spaces from the current baseline of 141. While the Tusla review recommended that there should be a further 50 to 60 spaces, the government took the view that there was actually a greater need existing in certain locations uh, of the country. And that is why we decided that we need to commission a further 100 uh, plus spaces along with existing plans for refuge spaces in Dundalk, Wexford and Navan. We know that without these safe spaces, many women will feel trapped in abusive relationships with no route out. We are determined to help victims and offer them a shelter from violence and abuse where they don't have to live in fear. A vital, a vital element of the strategy will concentrate on collecting data from service providers so that strategic decisions can be evidence-based. The SAVI report, commissioned by the Dublin Rape Crisis Centre and published in 2002, was the first national survey to assess the prevalence of sexual abuse, abuse and violence in Ireland. It gave us insights into the attitudes and perceptions of the general public to sexual violence. It has proved very useful, but 20 years on, we need an up-to-date picture of where our country is at. That is why we have commissioned the CSO to undertake their first large-scale sexual violence survey this year. It will deliver a significant new national survey on the prevalence of sexual violence in Ireland. It will look in detail at the experience of sexual violence and abuse for both women and men in Ireland. The data we get from this survey will be invaluable to our understanding of the prevalence of sexual violence in Ireland and attitudes to it. It will also be invaluable in planning for services, awareness raising and education, and in helping us understand more about the root causes of this violence in our society. For the first time, we will on an ongoing basis be able to see and to evaluate the impact that our work is having. And it will help ensure that the outcomes of the work undertaken through this strategy is not just comprehensive, comprehensive but also sustainable. Zero tolerance is a clear statement of this government's intent. It is unambiguous. 
and it is a firm commitment of where we want to get to, where we must get to in our country. I want to thank you all, both for the work that you've put into this strategy and for the work that you do every day to highlight DSGBV and to support those that are victims, survivors of it. And I want to thank in particular Minister McEntee, who has identified this as her top priority and has worked with colleagues across all of government and made ambitious commitments for meaningful action. As Taoiseach, I guarantee that this government will not be found wanting in matching your determination to combat all forms of domestic and sexual violence and in ensuring that we support each individual victim in a way that meets their needs. As a country, a society and as a people, we can do this and we will do this. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Taoiseach. Um, to my colleagues and indeed to all our invited guests, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here in the Department of Justice today for the launch of the third national strategy on domestic sexual and gender-based violence. Uh, and for what it's worth, I believe that this is a landmark day. The goal of this strategy, the goal that we have set, uh, as the Taoiseach has outlined, is zero tolerance of any form of domestic sexual and gender-based violence, and indeed the attitudes that underpin it. Uh, and for many people that might mean a number of different things, but maybe just to give you a flavour of what I think that means, uh, zero tolerance means not accepting any form of abuse, be it sexual, be it physical, be it emotional, be it financial, simply because it happens behind closed doors uh, in a personal relationship in that family setting. It means not laughing off lewd comments or behaviours. It means not laughing off the inappropriate touching or behaviours on a night out. It mean call, means calling out that type of behaviour, be it in person uh, or be, the, be it in those WhatsApp groups. Uh, it means getting right back to the basics. It means teaching our young people what a healthy relationship is what an unhealthy relationship is, not just between two people, but again, within that family setting. And as children become young adults, what a healthy sexual relationship looks like, and that that can be taken with them as they grow into adulthood. The only way that we do all of this um, is by putting in place the actions that we have here and by each and every one of us working together. So it's the education. It's making sure that we raise that awareness, not just in our schools, in our classrooms, but among society as well. It's making sure that we support victims, getting back to supporting a victim's journey, that when a victim comes forward, that they know they will be treated with respect, that they will be listened to, that they will be supported, that the services will be there to support them. It's making sure that we have effective punishment for perpetrators. And it's not all about that, but it is a very important element of this. And it's about making sure that we have that sustained and that dedicated and that all-encompassing will to actually achieve this overall goal and to bring about the change that we need. And I believe this strategy, being the most ambitious that we've had to date, will help us do that. It will see improved services and supports for victims through a budget of 363 million euro. It will update our primary and our secondary school curriculum. And we have our Minister for Education here who is fully committed to that. Uh, change. We have changes to our supports uh, and to our services at a higher education level as well. And we have the Minister for Higher Education here focusing on consent, coercive control, domestic violence, abuse. It will see tougher sentences for perpetrators looking at some of the most common cases of domestic abuse. So new laws to support victims, but also new laws to punish perpetrators. It also seeks to very clearly identify children yes, as witnesses, but as victims themselves, and in some instances as perpetrators, making sure that the services are child-centred, making sure that as we develop new refuge and accommodation, that the voice of the child is at the centre of this, making sure that as we develop new CPD and educational programmes for our frontline workers, that the child is at the centre of this, right to the court process, where again the voice of the child is front and centre, something that we need to ensure is part of this. Of course, this is not our first strategy. We've all said this. This is the third strategy. This is building on a huge amount of work that has been done by many of our predecessors, Francis Fitzgerald and those who have worked in this space, laying so much of the foundation, so much of the groundwork that has got us to where we are today. But this strategy in particular, I think, and looking around the room and seeing so many people here who I've worked with over the years, this strategy has been developed with the pain and the suffering and the heartache of too, too many women 
and victims, men and women, children, at the very forefront, I think, of all of our minds. And I think today we owe it to them, to their memories, to their families, to keep that zero tolerance as our absolute minimum ultimate goal. This is a clear strategy, and I say it's clear because we have an implementation plan with us, with clear timelines, with clear actions, who is delivering those actions, so there's nowhere for any of us to hide, uh, with very clear implementation plans and oversight as well to make sure that we keep on track uh, in the goals that we set ourselves. We will establish a new statutory agency. This will be the first agency with sole responsibility for domestic, sexual and gender-based violence. It will deliver excellent services, supports, accommodation and set world-class standards, building on the huge amount of work that has been done by TUSLA, by the Department of Children, but by so many of our service providers in the room here, and making sure that it is developed in that spirit of collaboration so that we have the best agency that we possibly can have. As Minister for Justice, I will lead in responsibility for now not just policy but also that service delivery and I think it is important that both of those are brought together under that one ministry while obviously working in a spirit of collaboration right across government. We will have that high level oversight board jointly led by the Department of Antishuk and the Department of Justice. Crucially, I think what is important is about this plan has been developed with each and every one of you. It has been developed in that spirit of collaboration, working with each and every one of you who are on the front line, day in, day out, this is what you do, working with and supporting victims. We all know the hard work that you do. We all see the services that you provide. And I have been lucky enough, as have many of our colleagues here, to be able to deliver and to engage with and to visit so many of the services and the refuge and the accommodation, to sit with you, to sit with your members, to sit with the women and the individuals, the men and the children that you support, and to really see that care and that love that goes into that support. But we know that there's more work that needs to be done. We know that for many of your organisations, you could double your funding and double your resources and it might not be enough because that is such the need. We know that you need to increase the number of refuge spaces that we have. And that is why we are committing to doubling the number of refuge spaces over the lifetime of this strategy. But not just that, putting in place dedicated structures, standards, so that we can further accelerate the provision of these services right beyond the lifetime of this strategy. I just wanted to mention uh, one of the refuges that I attended a couple of months ago. Um, it was in Clonmel, the Coon Sayre Refuge. And when I was there, one of the staff members gave me a poem. Uh, and it was quite a, quite a, a hard-hitting poem. And it was only in the last few days that I actually found out it was written by a service user. Uh, and it really talks about the initial excitement and the anticipation of a new relationship and I suppose the hope that that brings and how that was quickly, how that quickly changed and the trauma and the suffering when it turns into a destructive and a violent relationship. But it talks about society and I suppose the response and just to quote some of it, it says, neighbours listen but choose not to hear, gossip but not support, stay well clear. And really this relates back to the attitude that I mentioned at the outset, turning a blind eye because this is a personal problem, this is behind closed doors and this is something that this strategy needs to change and all of us have a part in that. It also talks about however the support that is there, not just from the refuge but so many of the other organisations and services, it says ears lit listen but do not judge and I believe that's again where we need to be, not just our service providers, not just our agencies but each and every one of us we need to make sure that we are listening and that we are not judging. And again, I believe that so much of what is in this strategy will help us bring about that change. But I have to be honest, um, as Minister, with the Taoiseach, with all of my colleagues here, we can develop policy, we can put in place new laws, we can put in place new curriculum, we can work with each and every one of you. But I cannot insert myself into the WhatsApp group and call out the type of behaviours. I cannot insert myself on every single night out where these type of incidents are happening. I can't stop the individual, unfortunately most likely the man, from picking up the phone and calling for sexual services from a woman who has possibly been trafficked or is most likely in a very abusive situation. We all have a role to play here in the delivery of policy and services and the direction that we can provide. But it's each and every one of us, each individual, each man, each woman, making sure that we play our part and we play a role in making sure that we achieve that overall goal, that overall objective along that journey, and that is absolutely zero tolerance of any kind of domestic, sexual and gender-based violence. Earlier this year, our country, 
I think collectively as a whole grieved uh, for the family and for the friends and for the partner of Ashling Murphy, um, a young woman, a beautiful young woman who was taken far too early. And I think for so many young women as well, it, it was quite, it was very difficult to see because it was so familiar. But let us not forget uh, the many, many other women who have been killed uh, at the hands of their partners over the many years. Justine Valdez, Jennifer Poole, or at Sanseg Surinders, Anna Creasel, Fiona Pender, 249 women over that time. As I said, none of us can say that this will never happen again, but we can certainly ensure that today we are saying on behalf of those women and their families and so many other victims and survivors that we will do everything that we can to work, to work collectively to try and achieve that overall goal. And I think this strategy will certainly help uh, to start us on that path. So I thank each and every one of you for your support, for your collaborative effort in developing this strategy. Uh, and most importantly, I really look forward to working with you uh, as we implement it and as we bring about the change that so much of us want to see happen. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is the third national strategy on domestic, sexual and gender-based violence. And as we learn more about these insidious, often hidden, too often tolerated crimes, we need new actions to reflect our society's increased knowledge and new ways of thinking to better prevent this abuse and to protect victims and survivors. And two years ago, when the three parties negotiated the program for government, we recognized and we called out the epidemic of, gen of domestic, sexual, and gender-based violence uh, in our society. And as a consequence of that, we also pledged to change how we approach it as an issue. And we acknowledged that there was that greater need for coordination of the state's response to do DSGBV. And in particular, we noted the need for an audit of those existing services. And that audit has led directly to the creation of a new agency that will centralize and lead the state's response to domestic, sexual, and gender-based violence. And as society evolves and, and changes, and as our thinking advances, we need new actions to reflect what is acceptable and what is fair, new ways of thinking about the most vulnerable, new ways of helping and recognizing where help is most needed. And I believe that this strategy delivers on that. I think we accept that all women are vulnerable to domestic, sexual and gender-based violence, are in danger of experiencing shame, silence and secrecy through coercive control and violence. But certain groups face additional disadvantage that can leave them even more vulnerable. And this, this can be due, due to a variety of reasons, poverty, exclusion, disability, legal status, ethnicity, sexuality, and language barriers. Addiction and mental health uh, issues may compound this particular vulnerability. And these groups, they are identified in this strategy, and they include people with disabilities, members of the LGBTI plus community, international protection applicants, people living in direct provision, people who have been trafficked, and travelers in Roma. And some victims are confronted by multiple discrimination or disadvantage because they are from a minority or marginalized group. And I believe a key element, and one of the reasons why this strategy represents a significant advance in thinking, is that it recognizes the additional layers of difficulty that these victims face in getting access to the support that they need. And as such, this strategy includes a focus on a need for an intersectional approach to addressing this issue. And this approach requires those providing services and supports to consider all parts of an individual's identity to ensure equality of access and equality of outcome for all. And the approach also requires that the possible enhanced vulnerability of specific individuals facing multiple disadvantage must be taken into account in service provision. And not only is this highlighted as crucial to the strategy, all actions included in the strategy are required to take that horizontal, intersectional approach to ensure the full inclusion of socially excluded groups. The strategy recognizes and acknowledges the need to provide support for all victims and survivors of gender-based violence, irrespective of any characteristics they might have, acknowledging the intersectionality between sex, gender, and sexuality-based violence and ethnicity, ability, and age. 
And it recognizes the need to reflect the lived experiences of particular cohorts of victims of sur and survivors, including LGBTI plus people, and acknowledges the additional risk factors created by overlapping forms of discrimination. All actors uh, leading on implementing actions will be required to consider the issue of access for these groups. Another group, and Helen mentioned it in, in, in her own contribution, that is recognized as probably requiring additional inclusion me measures to address the SGBV are, are children. And the second national strategy made limited reference to children, with children primarily identified as witnesses. But as mentioned earlier, we've learned more about these crimes and society has changed and our thinking has changed and this strategy has to reflect that. It seeks to clearly identify children as, and young people as both witnesses but also as victims and also as survivors. And this focus on children and young people as victims and survivors, it reflects a focus in both the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, but also within the Istanbul Convention. It reflects their, those documents' focus on the need to protect girls and boys. While we know that most victims of domestic violence are women, it is equally important to rec recognize that many of these women have children. And the new strategy will support and protect all children who are exposed to domestic violence. It, it will address both children as direct victims of physical, sexual, or psychological violence, and children who witness such violence between their parents. And I want to highlight actions in the strategy which focus on providing specialized services for child victims. And it is likely that we will carry out a mapping exercise of the work that is currently carried out by TUSLA and the HSE to identify any gaps. Other actions in the strategy include progressing the development of additional comprehensive Barna House facilities in Dublin and Cork with link to SATUs and therapeutic counselling. We recognize that neither domestic nor sexual violence discriminates based on race, ethnicity, religion, disability, or socioeconomic status. We recognize that domestic violence and sexual violence impacts on the lives of women and children of all backgrounds and some men. However, society does not treat all victims or survivors of abuse equally. That has to change. It's time for zero tolerance on social biases and stereotypes that create barriers to safety, to help, and assistance for, violent, for victims and survivors of, of domestic, sexual, and gender-based violence. Thank you. It's time for zero tolerance. For domestic abuse. For sexual harassment. For gender-based violence. Zero tolerance of unwanted texting. Unwanted touching. Zero laughing off the inappropriate. Zero tolerance of victim shaming, of being bought or sold. Zero sexual harassment, sexual violence, rape. It's time for zero excuses. Zero being afraid of a partner, hiding the bruises. Zero not being believed, asking why didn't you say no? Feeling there's no safe place. It's time for zero tolerance. Zero turning a blind eye to mental, physical and emotional abuse. In our streets, in our homes, in our beds. Domestic, sexual and gender-based violence has zero place in our society.